Good morning everyone, today I'm sharing with you awesome tips to shoot minimalist photos and this camera is not mine because we've got a guest, let's go! Alright guys, welcome to a new episode. Today we've got a special guest, Ivana! Hello guys, my name is Ivana and I'm from Southern California and I shoot minimalistic photos. Oh yeah! Guys, if you don't know what minimalistic photos, well we're gonna explain to you. But right now we are in Morea in French Polynesia. Super excited, Ivana, you are volunteering here for Coral Gardeners? Yes. Yeah. Guys, if you didn't adopt your coral yet, you can do it. It's awesome. Love it. Yes. Okay, Ivana, what are minimalistic photos? First of all, let's start with that. I think minimalistic photos are something that capture your eye and can be so simple and so intriguing. Something that makes you see something that you wouldn't see in the real world in your perspective. Oh, I like that. I didn't think about it. I really like her definition and that's exactly... I mean, you can look at her feed right now. It's very simple. It's very consistent also in the way you're shooting and that's why I'm not the best at that so I thought why don't I bring Ivana on the channel to actually tell you about it because single subject framing and minimalist composition is so essential I think it tells great stories so why don't we rewind to the shoot we did with the sharks and the rays ready yes. let's go Alright, so Ivana, what are your tips? What did you shoot? What are your favorite shots? How can we achieve the same results? So we shot sharks and rays the other day out in the water and I have three essential tips that I think would be best if you're learning or would like to learn how to do minimalistic photos. And it doesn't matter if you're on your couch, if you're in a city or if you're in a paradise like we are right now. I know I'm kind of bragging but I mean, <laughs> we have to, right? Look at where we are. <laughs> okay, so what shots do you want to talk about? So I'm going to talk about two kind of side by side. I have a really cool shark photo and my ray photo that I love because you get to see the detail in each animal. Number one, my favorite and most important thing that I always learned was lighting. So we mm -hmm. actually ended up waking up at 4 a.m. to get all of our stuff ready and head out during sunrise. It's very sunny here. You want the perfect soft lighting which achieves everything where you can get the tiny, tiny details that you might not see if you have 12 o'clock direct sunlight so it is essential to be able to focus where you want your light to be yeah and i think with the morning light especially you are still able to get the shadows and the highlights in the same frame well balanced but whenever like the sun is 12 o'clock you really yes. blow out one of the two usually and uh, that gets a yeah. little bit tough Number two. So as you can see in my photos, I'm super close to the images, which also has to do with post editing. But when you are on location taking photos, it is best to get in as many different places you can because we have digital cameras. We're allowed to take a lot more photos than you could on film, for yeah. example. So you can try a bunch of different things. You can go super close to the object, try for like from the bottom, over the top angles literally anywhere and then you can choose by your eye and style what you think will be best so that's cool so you really like get close like yes. really close like this close look at that i took a photo of ivana shooting and she was like literally that close <laughs> to, to the animal it was so cool they were going all over me i couldn't even get them away <laughs> yeah we maybe we should never have tuna on you before yes, i know <laughs> all right <laughs> let's give you a 360 of the view and share with you number three So number three of my tips that I have for you if you're learning minimalistic photos is to really use rule of thirds. I learned this when I was in high school, but my favorite. I yeah. know, but it does really help if you're just learning. This is where if 
your screen is put into a grid system where there's three, six, nine. You try and stay in the main points that are in the middle. It will almost be like a the square. The connection points on yes, the grid, right? the very connection points. Makes it a little easier if you have a subject coming in and out of your photo where you want it to be. So if I have Pierre here and he's looking this way, I'm most likely gonna put him up at the left center so he can be looking out on out of the photo. So it gives you a little bit of imagination, especially if you're doing close. So on my shark photo, for example, I covered most of the screen in the shark, which I used in post editing to crop my photo to be a little bit smaller. Originally, I had an entire shark and half a shark in one. And to me, that doesn't really feel correct. So I ended up cropping it, which is something that I highly encourage everybody to do, is really figure out in a photo that might have a lot of stuff going on, you might just wanna crop it down and bring it to the really simple core of the photo. That's awesome. So that's kind of tip number four. Yeah. Really crop. And you guys know I love cropping. Especially think... if you shoot in raw, always shoot in raw. Yeah. You get I mean... to use every little pixel possible. Oh, there we go. Like, use everyone. I mean, Every single one. Every single. That's a, there is a reason you pay more money, so yeah. you better use those pixels. We've That's seen great. his insane. He just straight yeah. to a like boat in a huge area that you never I, even. Highly see the recommend world. you or anyone to watch the video on cropping because I reveal some of the images that has like 600% crop. It's, it's just ridiculous. It's so cool. Number five, last tip. What is it, Ivana? So my last tip is just to really focus on what a simple photo is. The people that are most likely gonna be seeing your photos just want like peace and quiet in your photos. So one thing that oh, I good. mostly shoot is yeah. surfing back at home. And one thing I guess I'm known for, or in my photos, is making a crowd of surfers. Wait, stop. Is that a plane? I'm like, what? Well, that's a jet. It's a jet. Yeah. Crazy. Bye, Pierre. What? <laughs> All right, that was my jet. <laughs> Just kidding. I am usually known for is making a lineup of surfers look completely empty. So there can be 100 people out in Malibu or anywhere in California that usually is completely crowded. And I love to focus on one per single subject, usually a person, on a wave completely alone which is a little hard to get but when you're looking through this you just try to zoom as much as possible to that subject to create a feeling that's going to make people not too stressed out when you're around the beach especially which is mm. where i find all my inspiration yeah. around these beautiful blue waters i love to be able to find peace and tranquility which i find in the ocean that i'd love to show other people so you kind of shoot uh, tight with like long focal yes. length usually you're not like super wide where you get no. everything this is know. the first day i actually shot with a wide oh really angle. how did it feel it's very different really? everything's in the photo sunny you're like whoa yeah i'm gonna be using a lot of cropping <laughs> For sure. Yeah, or you have to get really close to objects. I made a video on that, like shooting landscape like wide but differently, mm -hmm. where I would like literally go on the ground and like shoot the grass higher and then oh my get gosh, everything it's, like, behind. Huge. Yeah. So Especially suddenly today surfing. Yeah. Where I was behind the wave and I felt like I was so close, but I was like, ah. Yeah. It's it's I love shooting wide. It's just so fun. And that's yes. really wide by the way. Fish eye. <laughs> Don't stop moving, don't stop moving. Don't stop moving. Alright guys, moving. I hope this has been helpful. Yeah. I hope you have enjoyed Ivana yes. because it was her first tutorial ever. Yay! <laughs> so Ivana's gonna stay here and keep shooting awesome content. You can check her out on Instagram at Ivana Cook. And well she's gonna keep posting stuff from here. You better post yes. a lot from here because and when we come it's back. mental. We'll be with the whales, hopefully. Yes, hopefully we'll come back in October. A little surprise, we'll see. Hopefully that works out. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Joe, who is behind the camera right now Eww. for helping us shoot that video. And guys, remember, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. We will see you in the next episode. Remember, if you're new to the channel, hit the SUBSCRB button, ring the notification bell. You know, there is a bell ring. and people can ring it. it make, no, it doesn't make ring. ring. It makes, no, like, Boom. Oh wow. Yeah, like, that's it. Boom. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. All right. See you in the next episode, guys. Bye. Bye. All right. Now we have to jump back. Ready? One, two, three.